Okay, so we just got a uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch. This is the 2011 model. Customer came in and he said that the computer does not turn on. He plugs the charger in, the charger does show a green light, then it turns to orange, but the computer turns on for a split second and then it turns back off. So he has to press the power button again, it turns on for a split second and then it turns back off. So there's something preventing the computer from turning on. Uh, what I wanna do is test it because anytime we get anything in, we have to test it. We do not just go by what the customer says, we have to test and see what's going on. So let me just plug a, the charging cable in. And as you can see, we do have a green light on the cable. The fan is spinning. It looks like it's spinning on and off, on and off. Okay, so it's not spinning fully. It's spinning and slowing down, spinning and slowing down. See, spinning and slowing down to a point where it just stopped. It's not spinning anymore. If I try to power this laptop on again, it doesn't power on anymore. Now, if we look at the power supply, when the fan was spinning, the power supply would go to 0 0.5 amp draw, then 0 0.1, then 0 0.7, then 0 0.1, then 0 0.5. So it's fluctuating. It's going up and down. Right now, I can't even turn the laptop on. The green light is still on, no orange light. So, customer said green light, then orange light. I do not see an orange light. I just see a green light. No orange light. Okay, uh, this makes me believe that the problem has something to do with current sensing. Look at this, no orange light, just green. Let's take a look at the circuit diagram quick. Okay, this is what I'm interested in. The first thing I wanna do is test for G3 hot, which is the 12 volt rail on the system the 12 volt rail is needed for this whole computer to work. So this circuit is what makes the 12 volts. The 12 volts exit to the system from here. PP bus, G3 hot. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna test the fuse, F7040 to see if we have 12 volts on either end. And we'll take it from there. Let's see what's going on. If we go to the board view, again, this is the A20 to 396 board. And if we look for F7040, it should be right under the battery connector. Where is our battery connector? Right over here. And the fuse should be right over here. So I'm gonna plug the charging cable in and I'm gonna test either end of the fuse. We should be getting steady 12 volts or somewhere close. The fan is spinning on and off. So let's go ahead and test the fuse. Oh, I hear it chime. Okay, look at the meter. 12 volts. You see how the number is not steady? We should have a steady 12 volt line here. Now it's steady. Hmm. Okay, so it was going up and down and then suddenly it got steady. So there's something wrong with this circuit here. Look at this, it's going up and down again. So we just narrowed down the problem to this circuit here, because if there's anything wrong in this circuit here, then we're not gonna get a steady 12 volt here. Now the first thing that comes to mind, since we do not have a steady voltage, are the current sensing resistors. The first thing I wanna test are the current sensing resistors, which are uh, these two here, R7022, R7021, and also R7051 and R7052. If this resistor has blown or maybe the value increased, then we're gonna have issues like this. And we're gonna also have issues where the green light does not turn to orange. So let's go ahead and test these resistors first to make sure they are okay. R7021 is 10 ohms, R7022 is 10 ohms. So the combination should be 20 ohms. And to find them on the board, R7020 and R7021. Actually, R7022. Okay, so it's R7022 and R7021. So this and this. So a combination should give us 20 ohms and we can test 
the combination from the two pins that you see here right, on the chip. I want to make sure that they are reaching the chip, so we're going to test from the chip, because even if the resistors are good and they are not reaching the destination, which is the chip, they can cause issues like this also. So let's go ahead and test those two resistors, and then we're going to test if the resistor is reaching its destination, which is right here. So that's one of them. And the second one should be reaching pin 27 of the IC. If these test out good, then we will go ahead and test the other two. And the other two should be right over here. We have to unplug the charger first. You could possibly damage your meter, so make sure the charger is disconnected before you test the resistance. Resistor number one is 10 ohms, perfect. And resistor number two, 10 ohms. So these resistors are good. I want to test if the resistor is continuous all the way to the chip. So let's put this in continuity mode. So what I did is I measured the, the resistor by doing this. And now we're going to measure if it's reaching its destination. So from here all the way to here, it's reaching. We should be able to also verify that we have 20 ohms by testing those two pins. So by doing this, we should get 20 ohms and we should be able to verify that these two resistors are connecting with the chip. So that's the quickest way of doing it. So let's take a look at the meter when testing out those two pins from the IC. And 20 ohms. Okay. So these two resistors are good. Let's test the other two resistors. And the reason I started testing out the current sense resistors is because from experience I know uh, a lot of times when we do not have an orange light, they are caused by uh, a resistor that has blown or a resistor that has increased in value. If they are good, then we can go on to test other things in the circuit. So for the other two resistors, one of them is continuous, which is 0 ohms, and the other one is 2.2 ohms. So 7052 is 0 ohms. 7052 and 7051. So let's go ahead and test this one. So is it 2.2 ohms? Now the meter may be off by 1 or 2 ohms, that's okay. 3.2 point. Very good, so this resistor is good, and is it reaching its destination? Let's see. We're going to test from the resistor all the way down to the pin on the chip, and it's reaching. Uh, the other resistor that we need to test is under this filling here. and that should be good enough to test that resistor. Let's go ahead and test. What's the reading on this resistor? And look at this. Look at the value. This should be zero ohms. The resistor is bad. That's what we are testing right here. Yeah, the resistor is bad. So we're going to go ahead and replace it. And everything should be good. This is the 402 size. I can either get this from a donor board or I can get it from one of the booklets that we have. We have all sizes and all values here. So let me take a look at the... 402, 0 ohms, we should have one here. 402 is right over here. And 0 ohms right over here. So that's how the booklet looks like. 
Here we have all the values for 0 0.02, all the values for uh, uh, the 603, the 805, the 1206, and so on. So before I take that resistor out of the book, let me remove the component of the board. And I'm going to do this using the hot tweezers. Okay, and the tweezer is turning on. Let's go back to the microscope and look for that component again. Okay, so it's this component right over here. We're going to take this out. Just a second. Nordisch fix? Nordisch fix? Hello, Nordisch fix? Uh, do you guys repair iPhones? Yes, we do. Do you guys repair for the XR yet? Uh, what's wrong with it? We just removed the resistor, and you can see how easy it was to remove it with the hot tweezers. There's still some of that stuff on the board. Let me remove that by applying some heat onto the board. And one moment. Hello, I have an issue with my MacBook Pro. Uh -huh. um, my company apparently used you guys. We've done a lot of work for them since 2014. Yeah, uh, George, <laughs> so did these guys. Yeah. So the issue is... Okay, so now that we added solder onto the pads, let's get our resistor. Where did they go? The, like three, four flew away. Right there. Okay, and it's in place. We can apply just a little bit of heat to make it flow nicely on there, although that is not needed. Alright, and that's it. The resistor is soldered in place. Let's just wait until it cools down a bit and we can go ahead and test. Let's go ahead and test. I took out the RAM chips, let me put them back and we can test. Okay, so the fan is spinning now, and we no longer have the fan spin and slow down, spin and slow down. Okay, now I hear three beeps, which means that the RAM is not seated properly. I'll reseat it, look at this, we have an orange light now. 
we did not have an orange light before. Okay, we do have an orange light now and the fan is spinning. And let me reseat the RAM and try this again because I hear three beeps, which indicates that the RAM is not seated properly. The fan is spinning. this the laptop is working so that's what was wrong with the laptop the resistor has increased in value from 0 ohms to fluctuating 60 70 80 ohms anytime you have a problem with green light not turning orange the first thing you want to check are the current sense resistors the ones that we worked on and the ones that we checked it turned out that one of them increased in value and that's what was causing the problem on this machine so the laptop is working everything is great it's loading and now we can call the customer to come and pick up i hope you enjoyed this video like this video if you liked it subscribe if you haven't already done so leave a comment if you have any questions and i'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.